going down. Oh, that's up. Be careful with my flop then. I'll get it back a little bit more. Hey, welcome uh, again to Monroe Live. I'm here with Armin, and the two of us are going to be um, talking a little bit today about steer-by-wire. There are a few cars out there that do have steer-by-wire, uh, the most notable being, I think it's Mercedes got, uh, got it, and... Um, Mercedes and, and as well uh, Infinity, yes. but they do have mechanical backup yeah, systems, right? right? Yeah. So. so it's not really the same. This one is pure uh, steer-by-wire, and uh, the steer-by-wire system here is what we call triple redundancy. Same as what you'd find in an airplane or a jet aircraft, uh, like a fighter or something like that. Uh, steer by wire is what they use on ships, airplanes, pretty much everything imaginable, except cars, except for this one. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a brief introduction into steer by wire. And uh, I'm gonna go in and turn the wheels and Armin's gonna tell you what's going on. Apart from the fact that the wheels moved. <laughs> <laughs> the wheels are going to move. Yeah, the wheels right. moved. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, Armin, you're so on. So if you come here. Sandy is going to, he's inputting a um, steering angle on the steering wheel. And without it being mechanically connected to the front axle, we're producing, electrically producing, um, steering angle at the wheels as well as in the rear. So as, if Sandy is wiggling back and forth the steering wheel, we're seeing that all four wheels are steering without any mechanical connections, right? So... Essentially we have two new technologies on this truck. One is four wheel steering, rear wheel steering, it gives you a lot more control over um, the um, dynamics of the vehicle, essentially shrinking the wheelbase at lower speeds and adding stability at highway speeds. And in the front, because we have uh, no mechanical connection, we can alter the steering ratio of the steering wheel uh, as we please. So as we're going slow, sandy, to just do a U-turn, he has to put in a minimal amount of uh, movement with his hands and the car will spin right around making city driving effortless. Uh, and then this then can uh, relax as you pick up speed to um, make the steering experience very comfortable at highway speeds. So um, Grace, if you can come in here, let's talk about something that people refer to as lock to lock. <clears throat> so I have the steering wheel um, cocked here, and that means that the tires are going a, a, like uh, to the right. So I'm going to turn this around, and that's the other lock. So what we're looking at is um, from center to lock is about, uh, is less than 90 degrees, or, or just a little over 90 degrees, and the same is true in the other direction. Now. In your ordinary type of a car, this would be a hand over hand kind of a thing. You're going to do an awful lot. Now, when you get into high speeds, I want even less ability to move the wheel because quite frankly, as you move fast, you're, uh, you're, you don't want to have a jerking motion that'll send you off into Never Never Land. So this is about the most that I'll ever do when I'm at high speeds. And that'll definitely keep me safe. And for those of you who know, I, I do like to go fairly quick. And um, I found that when I'm driving this, um, it's like that. That's about it. I almost never need to do much of anything. And going around a 90 corner, that's it. That's what, that'll get it. To, I'll, get, I'll get that much and that'll be enough. There's no more, no more stuff is needed than that. So <clears throat> from a driver's perspective, I love this. This is spectacular. It turns this monster 
or a beast. I guess I should use beast. It turns this beast into um, a sports car. Parking it is easy. Um, uh, I can make a U-turn in uh, basically the same amount of uh, radius as what a Prius does. This is really, really handy. So I'm very, very pleased with this. And, um, and so now we're gonna tell you a little bit about what goes on in order to make this work. As you see, there's usually, so you'd have a rack and pinion and a steering shaft, steering column going through your firewall uh, to the driver, driver's compartment, right? Here you have nothing of that. Instead, you have this guy right here mounted inside the vehicle, right? Where you have, you have a lot of electronics going on here to adjust the steering wheel, uh, telescope and tilt, but mainly you have this force feedback motor and a steering sensor here. So you, you can input, you turn your steering wheel, there's a shaft inside, the sensor will uh, measure the input that you give and send that via the um, ethernet loop. Yeah, so to, let's, yeah. Which is that component right here that Sandy can pull yeah. out a little bit. Unfortunately, there's one thing missing, and that's the, um, the um, module that goes to the front of the vehicle. And for that, uh, we don't have it. But you will notice that the Ethernet loop is doubled because everything has to have at least double redundancy. But Armin's going to tell you about the triple redundancy that we've got uh, with the uh, steering motors. Yeah, so you, you, you take that signal and you send it to your steering rack. Right, and on the rack we have two motors for redundancy. So if one fails, you still have a backup, right? And um, three sensors, two integrated into these units, and uh, a tiebreaker in case these sense different a different situation going on. You have a third one to um, um, Give the tie-breaking rule for what you're going to be doing next or what the electric motors that are steering the car are going to do next. Right, right. So that, you know, this is a triple redundant system. Yeah. Um, so moreover, um, this system is still in the same rack, so they're mechanically connected. You have your shaft in here, um, motors that interface with a little pinion that would go down to the shaft about here and a reduction set, probably a set of planetary gears that bring the motion of the motors to the rack and then you come out through the tie rod ends and put in the steering angle uh, onto your wheels. All right. Um, mm. Hey, Armin, um, I, uh, is this a ZF? Am I, did I read this correctly? Yes, so there's a ZF casted in right here. Yeah. It's got a lot of Teslas all over it, but it is manufactured and presumably co-developed by ZF, right? At least, yeah. at minimum, they're the supplier, right? So well, this is the first time uh, we've noticed anything um, that has their name on it, because we were looking, on this side, you've got the Tesla symbol, and that's all I saw. I didn't, so this is the, this is the rack right here, being driven by either that motor or this motor or both. We're not quite sure, because the module that uh, unfortunately, um, that makes all this stuff work from front to back is what this clicks into and it's out being, uh, it's being analyzed right now. We're trying to scramble around. Our customers are interested in getting the data, but you can see here that this uh, double redundant ethernet loop is uh, going from front to back. And for those who are interested, this is one of the things you can get out of 48 volts that you can't get out of anything else. This is the communications that's associated with this loop, and that's your power. And you can see that this is teeny tiny in comparison to what you'd normally see if you were looking at um, uh, this type of a device using 12 volt and, uh, and CAN bus. Um, the communication bus that we use in the past is called CAN bus. This is probably what you're gonna see in the very new future in everybody's car as they move to 48 volts and uh, move toward um, steer by wire. This is not the same part number as the motors in the front. This is still a 48 volt system as indicated on the label. Uh, but this looks very much like a conventional 
rear steer system. They're well back in the day they were uh, hydraulic, right? But nowadays or mechanical, <laughs> even <laughs> further back. Yeah. Well, it, nowadays all the electric rear steering systems are steer by wire um, because you don't need any redundancy. If it breaks, yeah. you still have the front, right? So quite conventional. The way this is laid out, um, you just put a signal to the motor. Um, there's a precision sensor in there as well, monitoring the system, and then you're just moving this rack back and forth. This one is belt driven, as you can, it looks like it's belt driven. It looks like it. You oftentimes see these belt driven. Either, the either, either belt driven or maybe small chain. We haven't gotten a chance to take this apart yet. Yeah, so. the, the front really looks like as if it's um, geared. Geared, right? yeah. Yeah, this, one, this, one's either, this one's either got a chain or a belt uh, going mm -hmm. from the motor. One thing that's somewhat unusual is that you don't have um, a ball joint here. Right, usually a steering rack on mm. the front um, because you need to articulate quite a bit right. through the stroke you would have. This is stuck. I think this one is loose. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, I can't do it. Hang on a second. I don't want to get pinched. Okay, go. There you go. Thank you. Usually, because you have more stroke uh, or more angle, you need something that gives you the freedom of motion <laughs> here, right? Uh, in this system, you maximally have 10 degrees, right? So you have enough in a bushing. It's a more efficient way to construct um, a joint uh, on your tie rod. And then uh, it looks like you have a forged yeah. uh, tie rod. And it looks, just realizing this, as if this is actually forged together, right? Like this looks like it's the same dimension. And then, they uh, cut it in half. And then cut it in half. Cut in half. Machine each end. Yeah, that would be a good yeah. idea. Okay, so this is starting to bite into me. So we're going to put that back. Okay, so um, what we're looking at here is something that I think every, um, every truck um, from an F-150 all the way up should have. These, this makes driving a whole lot better and easier. Uh, so I'm very, very uh, happy to see uh, the rear steering on especially this beast. It, it's a very, very big vehicle and, um, and quite frankly, uh, this makes uh, the bigness uh, kind of shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing that we can mention, I think, is that this connector, can you show the connector on the other side? It's this one. Is, uh, is connected to that. So you can see how much of this product is being shoved underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, the vehicle. So you've got this cross car beam here somewhere um, in front of the wheel wells. And, uh, and like I say, this thing is definitely, uh, this is definitely a monster. So we look at the castings that we've talked about in the past for the, uh, for the, for the, for the truck itself, but we also have these other uh, castings here that are not as, um, that are not as um, robust. Well, they're robust, there's no question about that, but they're not as, uh, as uh, elegant as what you've seen over there because they don't have to be. These are, uh, these are uh, not high-speed die castings. And by the way, I've just had the opportunity to drive the Model 3 that we have with the new ADAS system. Oh, comes out of my driveway, drives me down the back roads that I have to, uh, have to get to to get to work, and then when I do get to work, I, can't, I couldn't believe it. The car drives out and goes right into my parking spot. Mm -hmm. I, I have no clue how it knew that, but, uh, but Tesla's uh, like miles ahead of everybody else when it comes to the automatic steering. And by the way, right now, there is no um, ADAS on, uh, on my truck. In fact, it doesn't even have lane keeping. It's supposed to be coming and I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but right now, um, uh, that is like driving an, uh, like I think, I, I think I might have said this already, it's like driving an F-250. It's a, it's a big, big truck. Yeah, and, but this yes. makes it small. And Tesla, surely they're, they'll um, over there update self-driving to the vehicle eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And in the same manner, because this is all steer by wire front and rear, uh, Tesla has the ability to change all of this, right? Because yes. it's not mechanically predetermined right. what the vehicle does to your inputs. If something's not all right, or if they have better algorithms, or 
Um, you or if they see something mode? that they, they want to change, or a different mm -hmm. mode. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, like right now, this doesn't strike me as about 11 degrees, but we did hear that at, at one point. This doesn't seem like that much. But there's no reason, because we've checked it out with the wheel wells and whatnot, there's no reason it can't go to 11 degrees. Mm -hmm. Maybe what they're doing is bringing it out to try it on a shorter, uh, uh, a shorter like uh, wheel, um, um, uh, what would you call that, bias. But I think in the, in the future, that would just be a software change. It would just say, okay, from now on, and plunk, new, new data. Yeah, and not just steering angle, but also um, some of these systems, they will steer in and out of phase depending on speed. So right now, yeah, yeah. if you right. turn left at slow speed, your rear axle does the opposite thing, right? So your front axle will steer left, and your rear axle will steer right, bringing the tail around, creating that short wheelbase. Um, but you don't want that at other speeds. No. And it'll be too nimble and... Um, Uncontrollable, yeah. you don't want to roll the vehicle, no. right? And so, so you actually, kind of sometimes you counter steer, right? right? Oh, and all yeah. this, depending on no matter what it is right now, can evolve and be changed over the, over the uh, run of this vehicle. So you, you're, you know, it's sort of the philosophy of Tesla that you're never done developing it, right? right? Not yeah. physically, you update parts, you change parts, you make things better, but also the software. So then, and with this, they have complete control over what they can, how the vehicle responds dynamically. Right? Yeah. So, it's all very, very good. All, um, <clears throat> to me, um, this is probably the most technologically advanced um, vehicle, vehicle, and that takes in a lot of territory that I've, I, I've ever, we've ever worked on. Um, nothing comes really close to this with the Ethernet, 48 volts, steer by wire, on and on and on. It just seems to never end, and I can hardly wait to hear when the guys come back and tell us about the, uh, uh, the steering control modules. Um, it, it just amazing. Sure, uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I know a lot of people don't like the style, but pff, I don't care. This is, uh, I, I like the style, but I don't care about the style as much as I do what's underneath the skin. And that's what happened the first time we tore apart a Tesla. I despised the gaps. I hated the way they'd done a, a bunch of different things. I thought that the build was terrible, but you know what? As soon as we got beyond the styling, if you like, and the uh, appearance, mm -hmm. then you get into the real magic at Tesla. And that's why, for me, they're, they, they make cars, but they're a technology company, so. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So anyways, I think that's it. Uh, anything else, Armin? Not, Not right now. now. Okay, Next good. Video. Yep. yep. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned to uh, Monroe Live. Thank you. Bye.